Hey everybody, um, actually kind of excited about this video. It, this is going to be a bonus video. I wasn't planning on making it, but I realized after I had finished all those other videos that this one is actually a really important one. I don't want you to miss out on. It's a little piece of information that can very easily get lost. Uh, so first off, the re as you look at these unit sizes up here, you can see that the units are broken up by bathrooms, right? So a three bedroom, one and a half bath is in my eyes different than a three bedroom, two bath. And the reason I have done this is because in very highly competitive areas, an extra bathroom will make about $20,000 more. And that has been very consistent from a lot of different areas that I've looked into. However, that in, a, in an area that is not as highly competitive, and so just to define highly competitive, um, a downtown of a major city is gonna be a very high demand area. And so there's gonna be a lot of Airbnbs there and if you have a two bedroom, one bath compared to a two bedroom, two bath, that two bedroom, two bath is actually going to make you about $20,000 more, right? But if an area is not as in high of demand as a downtown Chicago or downtown New York, right? Um, the extra bathroom isn't going to make a major difference, okay? It's not going to be something that's going to like make $20,000 more. It actually might make nothing, no difference, right? And even a half bath, uh, won't make much of a difference either, okay? So this is something you need to keep in mind. I like to split up the bathrooms because I always wanna see if these areas are very highly competitive and the extra bathroom is making a difference or not. But as you can see here, so we're actually, I'm in the same area, right? Uh, we have the three bedroom, two bath. Right, what I was ready to go do was make the next video of like, okay, let's go to the next area. And instantly I realized that the three bedroom, two and a half bath was roughly about the exact same, it technically was less, than the three bedroom, two bath. And so that instantly piqued my, my curiosity and I went, well, I wonder how much data is in here that is very close to this data here. And I wonder if we can pull even more listings up that would show us what we would need to do to be able to hit that $80,000 that we were trying to hit with the three bedroom, two bath, right? And uh, realistically, I can also pull into this three bedroom, one and a half bath because it's not a huge difference. Actually, technically you can see a $20,000 difference here, but I'd wanna dive deeper in and try to figure that out as much as I possibly could, right? Um, and so I double clicked into the three bedroom, two and a half bath, and uh, which is a very, very similar type of unit, right? And what I ended up pulling up was these, I got some bad data here, then these two locations actually ended up being good data. Okay, so you can see the revenue number here. So I'm kind of getting excited and jumping ahead, but uh, you can see the revenue number here. And this range, these top four are the ones that are in that $80,000 range already that we wanted to look into, right? And obviously I can keep going, keep going, but we've already made that video. You know how that stuff works and you know how you want to go through it. What I'm just showing you here is a quick little bonus, right? Like, hey, look, you can look into the ones that are, uh, you know, have an extra half bath because they're so close and you can see there's not a huge revenue difference. So you can pull data from those listings as well. And I got these two listings here, which came out as good data. Um, and take a look at them. They're, it makes complete sense that they would be doing how well they're doing, right? You can see that this is a super nice listing. It's really well designed. They're obviously uh, catering to the most likely bachelor parties that bachelor and bachelorette parties that come to Austin uh, very, very often. They're giving them a really unique, fun, cool place to be. Um, and I've gone through the listing itself. It's, it's good data. Um, you can see everything looks really, really nice. Now here's the fun part about this is that it's, there's no major difference from the other listings that we were looking at. Um, actually, if you notice, there's no dining room. I, I, at a quick glance, there's no dining room, but the kitchen isn't like super new. Uh, there is a nice high ceiling here, which is a really cool feature. And you can see how the window is blocked like that. They did a great job putting up a shelf that is the exact opposite of that. So it does make it cool, but like the idea of putting these lights in here like this and taking the photo like that and setting up the, ta the couches so that they're facing everybody and it's this nice large space, like these people know what they're doing and know who their guests are and who they're catering to. Um, and they're making a space that's really unique, which is what Air everyone on Airbnb looks for and loves. And so you can see that they did a really great job with this. And even the backyard, you can see they have cornhole set up. So they have games that they can play in the backyard. Uh, they have ping pong tables set up in here. This is a home making 100000 potentially making less than it actually should be because of, of COVID, right? You can see, once again, benches. So there's seating out here, which is kind of odd, but it works. But they have a nice big setup here with a fire pit. They put some money into the backyard. They've done what they needed to do to make this a great area and a great space for everybody. Fun fact, I just realized, what, like confirmed, they don't have a dining table, which is uh, very surprising. But because of how well they designed this location, 
they're able to ask a higher nightly rate and they're able to get the uh, a, a better annual revenue because of that, right? And then the second one on here is making 90,000. And so I'm able to pull this up. And once again, we're looking into this, you can see right off the bat, it is also very closely designed to that other one where it's a very unique, uh, fun design that is, is you know, an, a very newer Austin kind of feel, right? It's not like that old school Texas, but it's like that old, uh, uh, bachelorette type party look. I don't know exactly what this feel would be called or this style would be called not interior designer. Um, but I can tell when I look at this that it is actually a, a fun design. Like to the point, look at the detail these guys go through to keep this thing going. Like the the way that they've designed the uh, painted the walls. Look, at, there's an extra bed that's in there. The chair itself is like that uh, a proper design. This in here is is black and gold, right? Because they want to keep up with the style. They even put a get naked um, shower curtain up because they're going that extra step with everything that they're doing. And it's this kind of design and style that really pulls people in. Look at outdoor outdoor patio set. That's one of the main things that we said that we you're, you're going to need, right? So I'm just trying to show you here that if you go the extra mile and you really design these places really well, you're going to be able to pull in that extra revenue that the other people are not able to do. And remember that this is a home in the exact same area that's doing 70, that did 74,000. So if you just went with this regular design, you can, you can pull in that amount of revenue, right? But if you went that extra mile, you're going to be able to pull in that extra $20,000 of revenue. And so you got to ask yourself, how much extra money should I put into this design? And what kind of return is that going to get? And from what we're seeing right now, if you put a little bit more, probably about $5,000 more into your design, um, you're probably going to walk away with like $20,000 more of revenue, which is just amazing to me. I think those are, uh, that's a great return on investment, right? So uh, keep those things in mind. Um, and when you're heading into where should I go next? Uh, keep it, uh, remember to look at the unit sizes that are very similar in size to the one that you just confirmed that you liked and see if you can pull more data from those uh, uh, similar listings, okay? I hope that's been helpful. Um, and this is just, once again, a quick little bonus video because I got excited and I saw that. So we're gonna keep moving along with the course as we uh, go from here. So enjoy. <laughs>